Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing uh, assignment number nine from my Calc CD class, which is multivariable calculus. Uh, so here we want to find a potential function for the vector field F by inspection or show that one doesn't exist. I'm actually gonna do like a bunch of things because not exactly clear what by inspection means in this case. Um, and also it's pretty hard to show that one doesn't exist by like mere uh, inspection. So let's see. Uh, here we have f is uh, x comma y, right? So the first thing you have to know is that this will be partial x and this will be partial y. So we know the derivative with respect to x and the derivative with respect to y. So one option here is to just um, try to integrate partial x with respect to x, which would give me uh, one half x squared. But if there was a function of only y, the derivative of a function of only y with respect to x would be zero. So we have to put not a constant of integration, but a function of integration. So I'm just going to call it uh, g1, and it's only a function of y, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the vector field that I was given and integrate partial y with respect to y. So the integral of y with respect to y would be one half y squared. So I'm going to get this. But again, if there had been a function of only x involved, um, the derivative of that would have been zero. So I'm going to introduce another uh, like function of integration. It's really like the constant of integration as far as these are concerned, uh, which I'm going to call g2, and it would only be a function of x. So at this point, I'm going to look at the two things I got and just compare them, right? So I have one half x squared, and I also have some arbitrary function of x. So that arbitrary function of x could just be one half x squared, that would work. And then here, I have an arbitrary function of y, and I have one half y squared, so if I combine those, I will get that the function I'm looking for here is 1 half x squared plus 1 half y squared. Pretty good. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have uh, our vector field is yz comma xz comma y. Uh, so what I'm going to do is remember this is partial x, partial y, partial z. Same kind of idea. I'm just going to integrate partial x with respect to x, right? So the integral of yz with respect to x is just going to be x, y, z. But then we have the issue, if there was a function of just y and z, when I took the derivative of that with respect to x, it would be zero. So I have to introduce that like arbitrary function. Uh, so I said the integral of y, z will be x, y, z with respect to x. And then we'll also have this arbitrary function. So what I'm going to do from here is look at partial y and look at partial z and see if I can like mess them up, right? So partial y, if I took the derivative of what I currently think that f is, what I think the scale, the potential function is, uh, with respect to y, I would get xz. And that kind of matches. But if you look at partial z, um, the derivative of what I think the potential function is with respect to z is xy. And that is not there. So that tells us there is no potential function. So let's kind of jot that down. I'm finding partial z of this thing. And it's going to be uh, the derivative of x, y, z is uh, x, y. And then uh, we would have like the partial derivative of this arbitrary function with respect to z. But the real issue is that we don't have an x, y. And since we don't have an x, y, there's no way that there's a potential function for this. So this is trouble, um, which means there is no potential function. Now, one option for showing that there's no potential function is to show that the mixed partial derivatives are not equal. And the easiest way to organize that is to find the curl. So this is um, a determinant, it's got i, j, k, then partial x, partial y, partial z, and then the partial derivatives. So partial x is in there, partial y is in there, partial z is in there. What I'm gonna do is find the mixed partial derivatives by just calculating this three by three determinant, right? So I get i, and then uh, you do like partial y of y minus partial z of x, z, which will give us one minus x, then minus j, and then uh, we do uh, partial x of y minus partial z of yz. So there, so partial x of y minus partial z of yz is this, and then plus k. Honestly, after we did the i component, we knew this vector was not going to be zero, so there's no way there's a potential function, but I carried on anyway. Um, so here for k, it's you do partial x of xz minus partial y of yz. So that part actually will be zero. You get z minus z. Uh, this cleans up to not equal to the zero vector. 
If you don't get the zero vector there, there is no potential function. So that's something to keep in mind. You could just straight up calculate that, but like if you're calculating that for every function and there are potential functions, you're kind of wasting your time. Let's look at the next one. All right, so we have our vector field is y e to the x, y, that's partial x, and then x e to the x, y, that's partial y. So for this one, I think this is really what the assignment is. It's like just guess. Uh, if I integrate partial x with respect to x, uh, I would have to have like uh, the derivative of x, y with respect to x is y. So this is perfect. It's actually just e to the xy. And then if I uh, find the derivative of that with respect to y, I would get x e to the xy. This is our function and we don't need to do anything else. I mean, I think that's kind of the by inspection part. All right, 42 here. Uh, our vector field is 2xyz, x squared z, x squared yz. And that again is partial x, partial y, partial z. All right, so we do kind of the same thing. I almost always start with partial x and just integrate that with respect to x because, I don't know, it comes first. So f of xyz would be uh, x squared yz. So integrating that gives me x squared yz. And then plus that arbitrary function of just y and z. And now I have to see, like, does it make sense? So I'm going to find partial y of this thing. So partial y of what I think the potential function is would be x squared z. And then um, if I just compare that like right away to what partial y is, that is partial y. Uh, and so that's not giving me any evidence that it's not the potential function. So let's look at partial z and see what happens. Um, so going back to there, partial z would be x squared y. If I look at what I have, Right, so this would be the derivative with respect to z of what I think the potential function is. If I look at the actual partial z, it, is, it has an x squared y z term. It doesn't have an x squared y. Since those don't match up, um, this can't be our potential function. Right, since those are not equal, no way. So there is no potential function. What we can do again is calculate the curl if we want to. I'm not going to do the whole thing this time. I'm just going to do uh, enough to show that it's not zero, right? So if I just do uh, like the i component, so that's going to be partial y of x squared y z minus partial z of x squared z. So partial y of x squared y z is uh, x squared z and then minus x squared because that's partial z of x squared z. And that you can see right away is not zero. So like we could keep going. Um, but we already know this is not going to equal the zero vector, so there is no potential function there. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So our vector field is, right, we got partial x, partial y, partial z, yz squared, xz squared, 2xyz. I, as usual, am going to integrate or try to integrate uh, partial x with respect to x. So that'll give me xyz squared. I mean, one option is just integrate all of them with respect to their respective variables um, and then just like look and compare. I think that's probably what you were actually meant to do. But for some reason, I decided to do it a different way. All right, I'm going to find partial y of this and then do a little comparison. So partial y is going to be xz squared plus uh, it would be like the partial derivative of g1 with respect to y. But if you look and compare it already matches up, right? So that means that there isn't just some function of y and z. Uh, so this thing is definitely not a function of y and z, so I can get rid of it. But like, what if there's just a function of z, right? So now I have to think like, is there just a function of z? So let's go back to what we think the potential function is and find partial z. So here, uh, I would get 2xyz. And then I'm going to compare that to what partial z is. And it is what partial z is. So there isn't just a function of z, right? If there was just a function of z, we'd have like plus 8z or something like that. But that doesn't exist. So I think we nailed it. Uh, I think that this is our potential function. Not bad. Let's take a look at another one. All right, our, our field is 2xz e to the x squared, 0, and e to the x squared. All right, so uh, we got partial y. Nope, partial x, partial y, partial z. Imagine getting that wrong. 
uh, partial y is zero, right? Which means that um, there is no function of only y involved because if there was like blah, 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 plus six y, then partial y would have like a six at the end of it. And that doesn't exist. So there is no function of just y, uh, which I don't know, maybe makes it easier. What I'm gonna do in this case, because it just looks easier, is I'm gonna integrate uh, partial z with respect to z. So go in here, integrating this with respect to z is gonna give me z e to the x squared. Nothing too exciting, but that's, that's why I did it. I didn't wanna do something exciting. In this case, we already know there's not a function of y, but is there a function of x? I guess technically there could still be a function of x, y, right? Because if there, no, there could not be. There's just no y, right? Because if there was a function of x, y, then partial y would have had like, you know, if there was like a plus uh, x squared y cubed, then uh, we would have had the derivative with respect to y would have stuff. It wouldn't just be zero. Okay, so just a function of x. You got to think these things through. Sometimes you suddenly have a random thought like I did, like, oh my God, I'm doing it all wrong. Maybe not. All right, uh, let's find partial x of this. So partial x of this, uh, it's like z is a constant, so you get z times 2x e to the x squared by the chain rule. So 2x z e to the x squared. And then there would be, you know, the derivative of this, so partial x of our function. It's really just g prime at that point. Now look up at what you have for partial x, and you actually have what we found. So there is no extra partial derivative with respect to x which means that this could definitely be our potential function. So z e to the x squared. And we're gonna get one more, which uh, I'm gonna do the way that I think maybe you would wanna do a lot of these. So our field is y z cosine of x y z, x z cosine of x y z, x y cosine of x y z. So if you look at this, uh, I'm just gonna integrate each of them, right? So if I integrate y z cosine of x y z with respect to x, the derivative of x, y, z with respect to x is y, z. So this is a perfect chain rule. Uh, this will take me back to the antiderivative cosine of something is sine of that thing. If I integrate partial y with respect to y, the derivative of x, y, z with respect to y is x, z. This again is perfect. So it'll take us back to sine of x, y, z. And then uh, for the last one, the derivative of x, y, z with respect to z is x, y. So again, a perfect chain rule. This, I think, is probably how you were supposed to do them. I don't really know what by inspection means. Maybe inspection means, like, whatever you want it to mean. Uh, but anyway, I got the same exact thing for all of them. So that would be my potential function. So f of x, y, z is sine of x, y, z. And there you go. That's actually this entire problem set. It's kind of a short one. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.